Hello friends, so as you know we are discussing about uh, development of emission inventory. Uh, for any city or for any country if we want to develop uh, you know total emission inventory then we have to consider all the sources or all the sectors. And uh, with that perspective we have already discussed like how to develop emission inventory for transportation sector, for industrial sector right. So, today we will discuss about agriculture sector means how to develop emission inventory for the emissions which are emitted by the agriculture activities or agriculture sector. So, this would be the content list for today's lecture like uh, briefly we will discuss uh, in introduction what are the emissions from the agriculture sector, what are the pollutants, what are the sources. Okay. Then uh, uh, from Indian perspective uh, means uh, different emissions which are coming out of agriculture sector that we will uh, focus upon and later on we will see like uh, what are the emissions from agriculture activities like enteric fermentation or farm operations or open burning of agriculture residues. Then we will see like what are the tools for estimating the agriculture emissions because there are certain software or tools which have been developed uh, by several agencies or countries uh, for the estimation of agriculture emissions in their respective countries. Then we will have a case study and uh, later on we will conclude. Now, if we uh, look into like a very brief introduction about uh, emissions or sources of the emissions from agriculture activities or sector. So, we can see like uh, methane from livestock enteric fermentation and rice cultivation is uh, one predominant emissions uh, you can see and uh, nitrous oxide from manure management and agriculture soil also uh, emitted in a lot of quantity. So, these are major you know greenhouse gases you can say. Then ammonia emissions is also there uh, and uh, they can also react with the sulphur dioxide or uh, ox, uh, these uh, NOx emissions which are available or uh, in uh, atmosphere and they can create some secondary aerosols. So, that way also one contribution from ammonia emissions is also there. Then uh, there are open burning of agricultural residues uh, which produce lot of small size particulate matter uh, typically less than 1 micrometer and that again create lot of smoke related problem in winter especially. So, in this picture you can see the overall uh, you know relationship of different agriculture related activities and the associated emissions or related emissions like you can see methane from this paddy fields and then CO2 from uh, soil respiration emissions and uh, soil carbon of course, uh, you know because of uh, certain processes then N2 emissions are there, CO2 emissions are there for uh, from different activities like uh, fuel burning in tractors or even uh, you know respiration systems. So, that is always there uh, this emissions and uh, deposition of uh, CO2 or extraction of the CO2. And uh, this NMVOCs are also there non methane VOCs hydrocarbons volatile organic compounds which are not of uh, methane nature. So, those, those emissions are also there. Well, uh, so if we summarize like what are the uh, important emissions and uh, uh, their uh, major sources. So, if we talk about like ammonia which is mainly from livestock farming and manure management and the mineral fertilizer applications this ammonia comes out of or is released lo in lot of quantity. If we talk about fine particulate matter like PM 2.5 then this is from burning of agriculture residues as I just uh, you know narrated soil cultivation because resuspension of dust. So, lot of uh, particulate matter is there or from the crushing of uh, you know bedding material by movement of live stocks and agricultural machinery like diesel engines etcetera, okay, tractors etcetera. Then nitrogen oxides are also there, oxides of nitrogen from fertilization of agricultural soil, agricultural machinery, space heating. So, oxides of nitrogen are from several activities related activities of the agriculture. Then volatile organic compounds those are VOCs from metabolic processes of vegetation, manures, burning of agriculture residues, agriculture machinery and then there are NMVOCs or also as we have seen uh, in last slide. Then methane uh, of course, uh, like greenhouse gases if we list. So, methane and nitrous oxide and carbon dioxide are also there from all these uh, different activities which have which we have just discussed. Okay, when we talk about emissions from agriculture sector from in India basically, 
then this chart basically this bar diagram shows like enteric fermentation is the dominating source of uh, CO2, okay? equivalent CO2 means when we talk about greenhouse gases, we represent them as equivalent of CO2 means we can convert them in the potential global, global warming potential or those, those kind of thing. So, like this is the gigagram CO2 equivalent, okay? uh, this much of uh, uh, emission is there from agriculture sector and that is basically 14 percent of the total greenhouse gas emissions in 2016. Okay, and this was the total greenhouse gas emissions from the uh, different sectors and agriculture sector was responsible for 14 percent. Well, within that 14 percent or the emissions from agriculture sector if we divide into different activities then uh, you know you can see 54.6 around 55 percent is from you can see this enteric fermentation alone. Okay. And the second largest that is around uh, 17 to 18 percent, this is from rice cultivation. And the third uh, you know largest emitter is this basically agricultural soil, uh, direct N2 emissions, direct N2 emissions are there. So, these are the three uh, large uh, basically activities from the agriculture sector. Now, if we discuss one by one like enteric fermentation or farm operations related to irrigation or you know tillage and sowing kind of activities or pesticide production and transportation, fertilization, fertilizers production and transportation or open burning of crop residues. These major uh, you know activities of the agriculture uh, sector, if we relate them to different kind of emissions, then we can discuss them one by one. Like enteric fermentation, if you want to estimate uh, you know emissions from that particular activity that is the digestion process of cattle, etcetera, uh, you know these like uh, sheep or uh, cow those kind of animals. So, this is the simple equation which we use for estimation of emissions of the methane like number of animals we go for and this emission factor of the methane for that particular species. So, different species we again multiply that is a very simple way of calculation then we add up all kind of cattle uh, you know because the different cattle different uh, uh, animals have different kind of emission factors which have been uh, estimated with the help of uh, different experiments field experiments. When we talk about like ammonia or nitrous oxide okay, so those emissions again number of animals play a role because for per animal we have this emission factor like uh, for N2O or ammonia. So, that emission factor will be there and then we can multiply it with the number of animals and uh, this j is the type of animal. So, for each type of animal we have to calculate then again we have to combine to get the total amount of N2 or ammonia emissions. When we talk about CO2 emissions from farm operations, so basically like uh, if we know how much irrigation water uh, has been applied in uh, that much area of the field or agriculture field in that particular state or district. And if we know that uh, you know the electricity uh, which is uh, being used for uh, running the pump is from coal based power plants, then this equation can be used for estimating CO2 emissions related to that irrigation activity basically. Okay. But if it is uh, being uh, you know irrigated by uh, let us say from canal etcetera, then this equation will not be applicable. Okay, then we talk about like uh, uh, this tillage and sowing kind of activities when we use tractors. So, again uh, the duration of the tractor operation because uh, duration will determine how much fuel is being burnt and the diesel consumption rate liter per hour. Okay, so, we can multiply that how much total diesel was consumed and this is the one factor which can be uh, known as CO2 carbon emissions from consumption of 1 liter of the diesel. So, there are you know certain empirical relationships are there which can help us to estimate the emissions of different greenhouse gases. And now if we talk about pesticide production and transportation then again there are uh, equations or relationships. So, herbicide uh, you know application insecticide application in how much uh, you know amount of per hectare it is being applied and then again you can use those values in this equation and you can calculate the equivalent of uh, CO2 carbon emitted by these activities. Okay, when we talk about fertilization, fertilizer production and transportation similar way like how much urea is being used, how much DAP is being used per hectare okay, and there are some 
emission factors. So, you can use those multiplication of those factors and you can calculate the CO2 equivalent emitted by these application of different fertilizers. And now, if you talk about open burning agriculture residue, which is a big issue as you know in this time of winter, uh, you know when I am recording this lecture, uh, the gravity of the situation is much more because you know in northern India, this uh, you know lot of pollution plumes are there and they are related with not only local emissions, but also transportation of emissions from nearby areas like uh, uh, Haryana, Punjab, okay, different kind of agricultural residues are burnt and particulate matters go by convection into the atmosphere, then they uh, go by advection uh, to downwind directions and they also add up into the <coughs> poor air quality of that particular uh, location or city. Well, so emissions from these uh, agriculture residue burning is uh, estimated by simple uh, equations or relationships which has been uh, developed and uh, forwarded or recommended by IPCC, okay, inventory preparation guidelines are there. So, accordingly for different uh, you know crops like rice, wheat, maize, sugarcane and cotton. So, different residues are having different kind of emission factors and they are used for estimation like you can see here. Okay, so, uh, crop type and then how much uh, you know district type and then the state. So, these emissions for a particular pollutant you can calculate and then you can you know <coughs> again you can integrate or uh, combine all those emissions from different crops like for each crop there is emission factor which can be used this uh, fraction of dry matter in the residue because uh, only the dry matter is um, burnt only is, uh, means there may be other usage also it is not that 100 percent of that residual matter is burnt. So, how much that residual materi material is being burnt? So, that is uh, to be taken that amount and combustion efficiency is also a factor then emission factor of a particular pollutant from that residual burning is there. So, all these are multiplied then we get the emission of that particular pollutant from that particular crop residue. Then from different crop residue we repeat this and then we add up and calculate the total emissions. Okay. Now, we come to uh, you know this uh, there are different tools or software which have been uh, like a spreadsheet uh, related software or other programming language related software which have been developed by different countries according to their needs and they are uh, you know much popular uh, to fulfill their needs for estimating of emissions of greenhouse gases or pollutants in respective countries. And these four major tools we are going to discuss like uh, one is the agriculture uh, module of the state inventory tool that is known as SIT okay. and agriculture emission estimation agri tool. Then another is global livestock environmental assessment model interactive gleam I and the agro chain greenhouse gas emissions ACE. Okay. So, these are the four tools which we are going to discuss. Well, uh, the agriculture module this AG module of the state inventory tool is shown here different modules are there basically this has been developed by United States Environmental Protection Agency in 2020. Okay. And this is interactive spreadsheet model. So, that is simple it can be uh, you know user friendly also. It is, it is designed to help states develop greenhouse gas emissions inventories. Okay. And this SIT and uh, the projection tool can calculate US state level estimates only not for other countries basically it is focused for the US states. And the state inventory tool which consists of 11 estimation modules you can see here and one is the you know this uh, synthesized uh, module which can uh, estimate across all the modules because uh, the synthesization is also needed for the total estimation of emissions. So, these are the module related worksheets and the data required for using that worksheet is given here and what kind of uh, gaseous or uh, pollutants uh, or greenhouse gases will be estimated by that particular module are given here. So, you can go through like rice cultivation okay, one module worksheet will be there. So, this is uh, the data required is seasonal emission factor, area harvested and the emission of the methane will be calculated by this particular module. So, different modules are there, different data requirement requirement is there and the gas emissions accordingly estimated. 
well this is basically the control worksheet for this AG module you can see here. So, uh, some default values are there like required data input uh, values you can select from here. So, this can have different categories basically ok and then default values may be there you can also put uh, your own specific values and then calculation can be done very easily. Well, when we talk about uh, next tool, tool number 2, this is agriculture emission estimation agri tool ok. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, you know this is uh, available for European, European Union member states only. So, uh, that AG tool was for uh, this SIT tool was for United States and this agri tool is for European Union and this was developed by European Commission in October 2021 very recently basically. Okay. And uh, this is basically based on old uh, guidelines or guidebook of 2019 and IPCC guidelines of 2006 and 2019. So, uh, on the basis of that this uh, little more comprehensive tool has been developed by this climate unit at joint research center GRC of European commission. Well, uh, uh, you know this is developed for livestock activities, agriculture soils field burning ok and this can estimate a number of pollutants like particulate matter, fine particulate matter PM 2.5, ammonia or sulphur dioxide or oxides of nitrogen, non-methyl uh, VOCs and then uh, PM 10, TSP, carbon monoxide, heavy metals, dioxins, POPs ok, persistent organic pollutants those are greenhouse gases like methane, nitrous oxide ok, all those uh, you know pollutants and greenhouse gases can be estimated. So, that way this is very versatile tool basically. Now, you can see uh, what is the you know way of uh, estimating like there are certain categories ok which you have to take care then air pollutant or greenhouse gas you want to estimate you have to select which fuel system you want to go for then year which year you want to consider. So, activity data and emission factor basically that is the fundamental thing for a every kind of emission inventory you must remember activity data and emission factor. So, those are the things which we really focus in all kind of emission inventory development. So, that you have to need, need to know and then inventory report is generated because you, you, you put those activity data and emission factors then this tool can calculate emissions of those particular pollutants and greenhouse gases. So, the basic approach of this tool is basically to enable the user or inventory compiler to fill out the templates with the activity data and emission factors and after that you run it and the emission uh, you know total emissions or depending upon what kind of result you want in which form like emission per activity or emission total emission or emission per year something like that you can play with and you can get the results. Now, we come to the tool number 3. Okay. So, this is Global Livestock Environmental Assessment Model Interactive GLEEMI and uh, basically uh, this has been uh, you know developed by uh, this uh, Animal Production and Health Division of FAO. FAO is nothing but Food and Agriculture Organization of United Nations. So, in Rome uh, the headquarter where uh, in 2021 it has been developed and it simulates the functioning of environmental impacts of livestock production activities. So, that way it is very important and you can see the systematic uh, global coverage of the 6 livestock species is uh, possible uh, by using this particular uh, model. So, uh, you know like uh, meat and milk from cattle, buffalo, sheep, goats, meat from pigs and meat and eggs from chicken all those activities can be incorporated in this particular uh, model or module. Estimation of greenhouse gas emissions uh, like methane, CO2, N2 etcetera using IPCC methodology is the part of this particular model. Well, you know uh, like you can see this uh, working of this the first bar you know this these kind of three bar charts report the emission inventory and protein production and total emissions. And in second the next two pie charts ok they illustrate the breakdown of emissions by greenhouse gas ok. Then finally, you can see these two bar diagrams they show the breakdown of emissions by source and sources of the feed. So, different way of results uh, you know you can calculate per feed, per cattle all, all those kind of thing. The fourth model is the agro chain greenhouse gas emission ACE and this has been you know developed by uh, John uh, Broji uh, by this uh, 
particular institute in the Netherlands okay, and it has been implemented as a part of this cumulative group on international agriculture research CGIAR research program on climate change, agriculture and food security CCF. Uh, AFS in 2020. So, this has been the part of that particular program, this model development. And this calculator or module or model is a basically tool for estimating total greenhouse gas emissions associated to a food product. So, this is specifically for food product. And the tool which combines the calculation framework with data sets containing crop greenhouse gas intensities and uh, food loss factors along the chain. So, you can see this is the uh, of course, this is very complex thing only in one uh, picture we are trying to uh, give you the impression. So, there is a scenario comparison you can do uh, basically different kind of scenarios you can develop. Then in second step is like selecting geographical location and the crop. So, this is the basic second step which can be used. Then you can go for complete sets of loss and emission factors along the chain the third step. Okay. Then selecting an entry for the crop greenhouse gas intensity. So, that is the fourth step. In fifth you do like uh, inserting uh, you know chain configuration data and optionally uh, overrule default parameter values. So, manually you can do that and ultimately you can get the results and uh, results are in this form that is quite uh, exhaustive and you can then uh, you know take observations, you can uh, analyze them, you can present in different forms, so that you can have different inferences. Right? Now, we go for a case study like how emission estimates and inventories of non-methane volatile organic compounds from anthropogenic burning sources in India has been developed. This is the latest uh, study uh, which has been uh, you know uh, completed as a Indo-UK collaboration uh, program. Well, so a brief introduction about the case study is that this study evaluates the relative contribution of individual sources of emissions to allow an assessment of the overall impact of emissions from burning sources to air quality in India. So, that burning sources overall uh, we have to see and within that biomass burning is the second largest global source of trace gases to the troposphere after biogenic emissions. So, that is why this is very important activity. Uh, and major sources include like wildfires or agricultural crop residue burning on fields, residual solid uh, fuel uh, combustion or municipal solid uh, waste kind of thing, those kind of things are there. Well, the methodology which we are uh, uh, you know having in this particular case study is emission factors based, okay. emission factors for combustion of crop residues, different crop residues, we have different emission factors and we use them. On uh, fields have been used and then measurements for uh, you know this uh, uh, using particular this proton transfer reaction time of flight mass spectrometry. So, this instrumentation has been used for 115 non-methane VOCs. So, that is quite interesting to see uh, what kind of species are there of NMVOCs or non-methane VOCs. And the emission factor applied was evaluated against that uh, for crop residues used for domestic combustion in Delhi. So, we could compare basically. Then the mean emission factor for crop residue combustion on fields was used for spe specific crop types with the smaller levels of cultivation. So, that these are the methodological uh, important aspects basically. When we talk about residue generated from uh, crops, the residue is generated from the cultivation of four main categories of the crops like uh, cereals like rice, wheat, Okay, maize, jawar, bajra, etc. Oil seeds like groundnut or rapeseed or uh, mustard, sunflower, etc. Then fibers like cotton, jute, okay, and then the sugar cane. Okay, these kind of four crops uh, related residues have been considered. And this is basic uh, equation which have been used, very simple. So, you can see uh, here CWG is nothing but mass of crop produced in the state. Okay. Then RTCR residue to crop ratio, so that you can calculate the how much residue will be there. Then dry matter fraction DMF is there because all residue is not burnt, only dry is being burnt. Then fraction of the crop residue burnt because other things can be used for other portion can be used for other activities. Okay. Then emission factor for the crop species like uh, 
wheat or uh, rice or different crop species. So, you can apply this equation uh, per area cultivated and you can have the emission of that particular crop and then again summation you do for all kind of crops. So, if you see entire India you can see the emissions from agriculture crop residue burning on fields were uh, significant in the northern part of India. Okay. So, these were like cereal production related states like Punjab and Haryana and the sugar cane and cereal production in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. So, those have been considered and the most significant emissions from Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan were from the burning of oil seed related crops like mustard or other kind of thing. Emissions from Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu were primarily from the burning of sugar cane related residues. So, these are you know uh, area related uh, uh, specific uh, characteristics. Well, there are certain uncertainties because uh, uh, you know NMVOCs which are emissions from different crop residue burning on fields, they are related to uh, you know timing as well as uh, special distribution of emissions. So, uncertainties can be there as per their particular location, particular timing and the generalization of emission factors measured by that particular instrument and the lack of measurements of some residues for example, sugar cane led to uncertainty in overall estimation. So, everything is not absolute this is uh, you know kind of indicative you can say. Then there is uncertainty largest for generalized emission factors applied to crops with lower yields as well as millet and sugar cane. So, those are the uncertainties in this particular case study. And if we conclude if we uh, you know go for conclusions of this case study, so they are like uh, uh, the compilation has been there uh, for recently measured emission factors and fuel consumption data to evaluate the magnitude and special distribution of non-methane VOC emissions from different solid fuel combustion and sources across the India as we have seen different states related activities. And the agricultural crop residue burning uh, it will show a large uh, seasonal and uh, you know it occur predominantly during the Kharif that is the April May uh, season and the Rabi crops like October to November crop burning season. So, different two seasons are there and because October November this Rabi season is uh, related to winter and uh, you know <coughs> this atmospheric dispersion is not very high in this particular uh, duration. So, uh, if a uh, lot of burning activities are there then within uh, you know surrounding areas pollution related problems may arise. Then the country wise measures are required to prevent the burning of agriculture crop residues on fields and uh, municipal sol solid waste to reduce the significant of non-methane VOC emissions from these uh, particular source categories. Uh, that, that is uh, you know the uh, conclusion you can say with the help of this study. So, ultimately if we want to conclude we can say that the agriculture sector significantly contribute to the greenhouse gas emissions although there are other emissions like particulate matters and uh, ammonia, okay, nitrous oxide and methane are the greenhouse gases, but other pollutants are also there. And these greenhouse gases emissions are basically from uh, you know these livestock uh, enteric fermentation and rice cultivation related activities and nitrous oxide is predominantly from manure management and agriculture soils. Okay. And emissions from open burning of agriculture residues uh, releases large amount of pollutants such as fine particulate matter and that can degrade the ambient air quality which every year we see particularly in northern part of India. So, uh, that way means you can now appreciate agriculture related emissions are also very important uh, if we uh, you know consider them uh, how much they contribute to the greenhouse gas or how much they contribute to the uh, regional air quality uh, status. So, that is all for today. Thank you for your kind attention. These are the you know references for your additional information you can go through them. So, thank you again and see you in the next lecture. Thanks a lot.